Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Kovalt and in this video we're going to be going over molar heat capacity. Uh, in my last video we we're talking about uh, the energy diagrams or the uh, reaction diagrams where we can look at the changes of, uh, of the changes in heat of a reaction from reactants to products. Uh, in this, this video we're going to uh, focus on molar heat capacity. Now what is molar heat capacity? Well, molar heat capacity is very similar to specific heat capacity, where specific heat capacity is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree. Uh, molar heat capacity, as the name suggests, is the energy required to raise the temperature of one mole of a substance by one degree. So uh, again, very similar, but different units. So. Um, as I said before, when we're using our Q equals N cat uh, equation, we could understand why the quantity of energy is equal to mass in grams times the specific heat times the uh, change in temperature. Because if you look at the specific heat units, it's the energy in joules over the grams and degrees Celsius. So per gram per degree Celsius, so in order to get the unit of energy by itself, you have to multiply the specific heat by uh, mass in grams and by a change in temperature in degrees Celsius. Or it could be Kelvin as well, because the change in temperature in Celsius is the same as the change in temperature of Kelvin, because the, um, the unit degree is the same size for both Kelvin and Celsius. So um, if you look at the equation here, here we use the molar heat capacity. Uh, the, here we have the heat capacity is joules per mole degree uh, Celsius. So notice here we have moles. So in this case, our equation is going to be a little bit different because instead of multiplying by mass and grams, we're going to have to multiply by the number of moles. So here's our new equation where the Q quantity of heat is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. And again, the change in temperature could be either in Celsius or Kelvin because the change is going to be the same. So here's a sample example. So I have a sample of uh, barium chloride, and that sample is increased in temperature by 3.8 degrees Celsius. So here's our change in temperature in degrees Celsius. When the sample absorbs 2.4 times 10 to second joules of heat energy. All right, so I have a sample of barium chloride. I heat it up. Uh, until it increases by in temperature, the change in temperature is 3.8 degrees Celsius. And uh, in that same degrees in that change, it absorbs 2.4 times 10 to the second joules of energy. And they want us to calculate the number of moles of barium chloride if its molar heat capacity is 75.1 joules per Kelvin mole. Okay, so notice that we have Kelvin here. And so we want to make sure that we are uh, multiplying by a change in temperature in Kelvin. It's a good thing that we know that a change in temperature in degrees Celsius is the same as the change in Kelvin, the change in temperature in Kelvin. So we can use our equation Q is equal to N, the number of moles, times the molar heat capacity, times the change in temperature. So then we have our moles. Uh, well, we're trying to find moles. So we know that Q is equal to 2.4 times 10 to the 2 joules. So if we write this here, it'd be 2.4 times 10 to the 2 joules is equal to the number of moles n, which is what we're trying to find. They're asking us, what is the number of moles? So we're trying to find that. They gave us the molar heat capacity, which is 75.1 joules per Kelvin mole. So that's 75.1 
joules per Kelvin mole multiplied by the change in temperature. Again, so 3.7 degrees Celsius or 3.8 degrees Celsius will be the same as 3.8 degrees or not degrees, but 3.8 Kelvin. So here, the number of moles. So we're going to solve for number of moles. Uh, the, the Kelvin cancels out. So we're left with moles and joules. So we're going to divide both sides by this, and then we'll end up with moles on the other side. When we do that, when we calculate the number of moles, we end up with 0 0.84 moles. Zero point, so 0 0.84 moles of our barium chloride. So that is the number of moles that we end up with. So I hope this video was helpful. That's molar heat capacity. So if this uh, helped you in any way, please, by all means, like this video, share this video with your friends, hit the like button. Also make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell so you'd be notified by other videos. Make sure you click all after hitting the notification bell. And also put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.